And so I started to notice I was piling all these things onto my back and carrying them around and, and claiming that it was me, but it really wasn't who I truly was at my soul level. Welcome to Fierce Queens. This is an incredible live series of women, of authors, of Jaguar Medicine here sharing fierce comeback stories. I would love to introduce Amber Dobkins, who is an alchemist, a visionary, shamanic healing practitioner, and a woman's empowerment mentor. She is the creator of Radiant Integrity. I love that name. A program for women who are ready to reboot their life and embody the courageous woman within. Amber activates women to reclaim their identity, awaken their power, and align with their soul desires. That is a juicy bio. I love it so much. And I can't wait to talk to you and learn about, you know, what you've been through, how you are, who you are today. And that's what we're talking about today, the fierce comeback story. So we'd love to hear from you on, on what, what you what made you who you are today. Oh man, there's so much, there's so many pieces, you know, from childhood and on, but you know, to move the story along, I would say that I, as a mother and a wife, I wanted to be the good mom, the perfect mom, the perfect wife. And I I stayed at home. So making the house look good and, and all the healthy meals and all of that stuff and doing things right. And so for me, what happened in all of that is I lost who I was. I lost mm. pieces of me here and there. And I loved being a mom. I loved being a wife and all of those things. But I started to realize I was doing things for everyone else. And we were involved in a community of religious belief. And I would take on their beliefs that not weren't necessarily my own beliefs. And so I started to notice I was piling all these things onto my back and carrying them around and, and claiming that it was me but it really wasn't who I truly was at my soul level. Mm. So I had to unpack all of that and became who I am today. <laughs> yes. And that's why, so the, the title of our conversation today is reclaiming my divinity, connecting to my sacred truths to find freedom within my soul. I'd love to hear more about what inspired that beautiful title and, and really the journey that you've been through to connect to that, connect to your divinity. Mm, yes, that was such a powerful time for me. Um, years ago, uh, 2017, so I, six, seven years ago now, I found myself with overwhelming thoughts, completely stressed out, um, full of anxiety to the point where normal things were difficult for me. Making dinner was so stressful. I couldn't remember what I had just put in the little dish, what ingredient I just put in the little dish. And I got so frustrated with how you'd have to scroll up to the recipe to find <laughs> the ingredient yes. and then scroll down to when to put it in. Somebody needs to change that for people who have anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> I can so relate. I can so relate to that. Oh my goodness. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. So just the simple things like that. And then my kids would be like, Hey mom, when I, they, I had teenagers at the time. So, you know, when teenagers come to you, you want to listen. And it's usually like, this is going on at school or, you know, something important that they need to talk about. And I literally had to say, guys, I love you, but if I am making dinner, don't talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> I just, my brain could not handle it. Yeah. So it, it it became more overwhelming to do the little things in life, to go shopping, to drive across town. And I, I developed social anxiety and I'm a very social person. So that became so overwhelming that I went into depression and mm -hmm. I was taking two hour naps a day. And then on weekends, sometimes not getting out of bed at all and just kind of falling into who am I? What am I doing? I, I don't have a bad life. I have good kids. I have a, a good husband. I'm a stay at home mo mom. Like I should be happy, but I had just lost so much of myself. I call it my near death experience, my spiritual mm -hmm. near death experience. So many yeah. people have a physical near death experience where they end up in the hospital and they're there for six weeks laying on their back and they have time to contemplate their life. For me, it was 
searching for something bigger, something more to life than just doing the dishes or just making a meal. Mm -hmm. So I'm a very connected spiritual person. Yes. And I wasn't getting that at church. I was feeling that God was separated from me, that he was a, a judge and critical and, and I was just trying to please him. And my prayers at night were, God, please help me find pleasure, find happiness, not feel guilty and not feel unworthy. Cause I would go to church and we would sing songs of I'm not worthy. I, you know, all the things of, of where I felt I wasn't worthy of being loved or being worthy of having happiness. I would just feel guilty with all of those things. Mm -hmm. So during that time, um, I just kind of lost my sense of being and couldn't function really. And I, that it took me a while to really allow myself to be in that, to just feel what I needed to feel and rest. And my body needed to rest. My mind needed to rest. And my family was really good about that. But then I started to notice that my family was starting to kind of fall apart. Not, not because mm -hmm. I wasn't there, just I saw the things in myself and them. Like I'm struggling emotionally with this. And I, then I could see it in my kids. Mm -hmm. So, and my marriage was struggling at the time also. So I began to just search for more. It, it felt like I took half of myself and set it aside like this. The spiritual side of me, I took on as people pleasing and, and whatever I was told God was. And, and I said, this isn't working for me anymore. And I set it aside. And so I just had half of myself really working in life. And I realized I needed to pick up that other half, but I had to figure out what that was for me. Mm -hmm. So what was, what were my truths? What was sacred and, and spiritual to me? And what I started to find is I was having dreams that were prophetic and my kids were having supernatural experiences. And we started to find these gifts coming in and mm -hmm. I was terrified of them. I thought, oh, are these, are these evil? Are they like, are these safe? Are they okay? <sighs> and um, people started to share with us that they thought we were a little crazy. So <clears throat> I had to work through that and, and sift through that. And what I found is this inner wisdom within me that was connected to a divine source. I started to study oneness and energy in our energetic body and realize that we were connected to everything. And if I was connected to the divine source, then God wasn't outside of me. There was a divine wisdom within me that I could connect to at any time. And I could use that as guidance. And, and it came from a loving and supportive space so that if there was something that felt true to me or that I needed to test out, I could tap into that divinity within and ask, is this true for me? Is this something that I want to take on as my truth? Not because someone told me it was true, because I feel it in my whole being and I can claim it as my own. And through that, I began to uh, awaken. My soul started to, to feel alive again. The, 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 I, I just don't even know how to explain it except for an energy arose within me that yes. allowed me to be myself and to enjoy it, to not feel guilty, to not feel unworthy, to not feel unlovable. And I really had to kind of do it myself within my heart connected to the, the divine source that was in me. Yes. What a beautiful journey. And just that, that sense of connecting to truth right like you you know it's amazing how many things we're taught how many things we learn in our upbringing in our surroundings in church all of the things that just they don't feel right you know that we we just have this um and i'm just, i'm so grateful for that ability for us to just start to draw towards what really is true for us and you can feel it i mean i know when you were talking about having a bit of a, a struggle explaining the words. I think so many of us know we just, that feeling, it's like, yes, yes. It, we just, we feel it in our bodies. We feel it in our hearts and what a joy. And I just, I love hearing you share about it because it's just such an important reminder of this journey. So woven within the comeback. Mm -hmm. It's coming back to truth. It's coming back to who you really are. 
Mm, yes. And that's so powerful to come back to yourself, find those pieces that you may have lost along the way or, or maybe didn't lose, just set aside to, to take care of things that needed to be taken care of at the time. Mm-hmm. But then you can pick those pieces back up and rediscover a piece of yourself and bring back the wholeness of who you are. And, that, and the Radiant Integrity, a program that you talked about in the beginning, yes. that's what that is to me. Integrity means to integrate to become whole, to bring the pieces back together. And so that is so important to me for us as as humans, but mainly as mothers to find those pieces and and really come back to ourselves, as you said, our wholeness. Mm-hmm. And well, radiance is such an important quality for, especially for women, right? Like it's something that I just really connect to that word. I'd love to hear more about you know how you chose that word how that came to you because that quality within us is something that i think so many of us have lost and we you know through this process of the comeback we are really essentially getting our radiance back so i'd love to hear more about that piece from you mm, yes i love the word radiance and uh, for me it's it's light you know we're shining out into the mm. world and i feel like so many times we dim our light we stay small we stay hidden because we're either people pleasing or we're afraid of what others will think or we're just not sure who we are or if we can trust the people around us or or even ourselves at sometimes so we dim ourselves. so for me radiant is is accepting our truth our authentic truth and believing it wholeheartedly to where it doesn't matter what other people think Mm -hmm. It, mm-hmm. We can shine our light and the right people will come to us. We will affect the right people that are drawn to that light and want to shine their light also because we're not for everybody and not everybody is for us. And that's okay. It, it's okay to to separate and, and to know when something isn't for you. It doesn't mean that they're bad and you're good or you're bad and they're good. It's, it's just a neutrality. It just isn't right at that time. Mm, I love that. Yeah, there's such a courage too in, in just allowing yourself. I mean, it does, there's an effortlessness to it once we allow it, but that courage in just letting your light shine. Has that mm. been a big part of your journey as well, connecting through that? Oh, goodness. Yes. Courage has been huge for me. Um, I was a very timid woman. Um, I, I constantly doubted myself. I overthought everything. If I if I went out um, to a social event and said something to somebody, I would think about it for days and sometimes be sick. Like, what if they took it like this? Or did it sound like that? I just was constantly doubting myself. So um, courage for me was trusting myself. I had to trust myself and that it was okay to be who I am, but also to face those little shadows or flaws that we think of ourselves and say, you know what, it is what it is. And yes, I can work on that. But I my heart's intention is kindness is to share truth and never to offend anyone. But I can't let that overtake and and keep me small. So having the courage to speak my truth to to face those fears and embrace who I truly am was a big part of my my journey and owning my truth and saying, you know what, this may be a little bit different. It's out of the norm. It's not the, you know, the church package of what truth is, but this is my truth and I will courageously share it radiantly into the world without fear. Mm. I so connect to what you're saying about that. It's like this this, you know, when you were talking about second guessing yourself or, or worrying about that. And I think that that's such an important thing. It's something that, you know, as high sensitives, we do, we have this awareness of how powerful energy and interactions are, but it's the intention, like you said, it's the intention behind it. And then I think when we really connect to that, it really does allow so many of those fears to fall away just really being fully in that awareness of, of what we're here for and what, what we represent. Absolutely. I completely agree with that. For me, it was um, 
really finding that, that you mentioned the energy and finding the energy is everywhere. Like I can learn from anything. I can learn from a tree outside and connect to its wisdom. I can learn from a bird that's flying by in a certain direction or you, you know what there there's insight messages or, or lessons I believe in everything. And it's how we choose to react. So if I get up in the morning and I have a, a sink full of dishes, I can get angry and, you know, grumble about it. Or I can ask myself, you know, what can I learn from this right now? You know, maybe I need to do the dishes at night before bed, or I can contemplate a different way so that the, the outcome is more beneficial and more pleasurable so that when I wake up, I'm happy to see a clean sink instead of grumbling about, you know, maybe I'm complaining about my husband didn't put the sink this dish away or something. So it's can I feel like connecting to the energy around us and our our environment and the world around us is so important. Oh yes, well, and exactly what you're saying about um, the, our perspective and our choice within that. Th- those are really powerful things to tune into as well as we're going through our own healing journeys. You know, the way we look at the world, the way we make meaning of what's around us, what what people are doing or what we see in front of us is so important. And so can you talk a little bit more about that, about choice and perspective and how, how that's also shaped your journey? Oh, definitely. Um, oh, choice. I feel like we need to allow ourselves to make our own choices, but also allow the people around us to make those own choice, their own choices. It, mm-hmm. I call it, um, being where we are on our journey. And we have this journey throughout life and we're learning things as we go. And I feel like so many times we wanna be so far ahead of where we are. And so then we're beating ourselves up and we're telling ourselves, oh, I should be here or there or anywhere else but where we are. But coming into the present moment and saying, this is where I am, this is where I'm meant to be. And I accept this moment, this journey that I'm on, this choice that I have to be right here. And then looking around and saying, you know, definitely looking at where you want to go and then making choices in life now in this moment to eventually get there. And I also believe in celebrating, celebrating our victories, even if it's getting the dishwasher loaded and having a clean sink, doing a happy dance or whatever (laughs) it is, choosing happiness and choosing to be present, but also choosing to have intention to move forward to where you truly want to be, where your soul desires to be. That's where that soul desire comes in, allowing that soul to speak and moving forward in it radiantly without the fear, without the dimming and choosing that. I love that you brought in the piece about joy and celebration within that as well, even within the, you know, the smallest things, because we, we so, I think that's what we need. That's, you know, with everything that's been going on in the world, it's that joy, it's that light, it's that celebration that will always keep us going, that will connect us, that will reignite anything that's been dimmed within us. So that is such, oh, that's such a powerful reminder, I think for everyone to just connect to that and, and that that is also a choice, that it's like a frequency that we can just tune into by choice. Absolutely. Yes, we can definitely look at things um, through the eyes of fear or anger, whatever our emotion is, our emotion definitely affects us in multiple ways. I totally believe our thoughts affect our emotions, and that in turn affects our physical body. So we can literally make ourselves sick if we continue to have the same negative thoughts, and then those turn into negative emotion. I'm using the word negative, lower emotions, such as anger, shame, guilt, those sort of things. Those manifest in the body. And then for me, it affected me spiritually because then I took on all of those emotions and and said, that's who I am. I mm. am unworthy. I mm. am unlovable. I am not allowed to have pleasure. Pleasure is a guilty sin, you know, that sort of a thing. So for me, I started to choose my thoughts. And when my thoughts started to go down, like I mentioned with the dishes, being angry and then angry at my husband, instead I could stop and say, okay, 
I see where this is going, stopping the pattern, the thought pattern and saying, okay, what can I do instead? What can I learn from this? Like I mentioned, um, and, and by redirecting that thought pattern, it redirects your emotions. Then you can choose the joy and over the anger or, or the, the love, or whatever the emotion is that the higher emotions that bring us into a higher vibrant frequency where we feel radiant, where we feel more of ourselves. Because honestly, when we are in those lower emotions and we have those negative thoughts, we don't feel good about ourselves. Mm -hmm. We beat ourselves up more. And then the, the pattern just is a cycle, a spiral downward. So we can choose to stop that spiral and make it go upward. So what are the tools that you've drawn on, the modalities that you've drawn on the most throughout your journey? And especially with this, because I think this is such an important thing. It's like, you know, the thoughts and the emotions are almost like a barometer. It's a signal that, okay, something needs to be done to, to really start to shift myself out of that. So I'd love to hear, you know, what you've drawn from specifically in, in different tools and um, techniques that, that might be beneficial for, for others to learn from and also that, so they can connect to the work that you do as well. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Um, my, one of my favorite tools is meditation. Mm. That is something that um, it, it awoken something within me. Now, for me, meditation isn't just sitting in silence, although that is a form of meditation, and I believe everyone should do it however they choose whatever works best for them, because that's what I believe, finding your own truth. So mm -hmm. for me, meditation is usually has to do with some music, setting the 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 room maybe lighting a candle or an incense something of that nature i like to set the space and um, i'm very visual so i enter into meditation and i allow my my sight to wander it's not really thoughts mm -hmm. it's more kind of like watching a movie for me so i just allow whatever to show up to show up and and i find when something shows up, I, there are times that I have a resistance. For me, one of the things that showed up in uh, meditation was my own power and it showed up as a lioness. Wow. And I was scared of this lioness. The lioness wasn't out to hurt me. It just showed up to me. And I knew this represented something bigger within me. And I didn't know how to embrace that. So in meditation, a lot of times I, I'll find myself resisting something and then I'll take note of that. And outside of meditation, I may journal about it. Why, why did the lioness bring a resistance in me? Or why did it scare me? She wasn't scary at all. And I'll journal. So meditation, journaling, mm -hmm. setting intentions, and those sort of things are, are regular practices that I do. I like to use the moon phases for this. So on new moon, I set intentions. The moon is growing in light at the new moon. So then we can grow in our intentions. And so I will sit down at the new moon and ask myself, what do I want to bring into my life? What, what does my soul desire? What, what's going to make me feel more radiant? Those sorts of things. And I'll write things down. And, and I might do a ceremony with cacao or, or something that I, I like to bring the physical um, emotional and spiritual altogether. So mm -hmm. I may speak something over a drink that I sip, bringing the, the different elements into one. And then at full moon, the, the moon is now at its fullest bright light and it's going into darkness. So I see that as releasing. What do I mm -hmm. want to release or let go of, surrender to in life? So a lot of times I ask myself, where is there stress or frustration? And then I follow that frustration or stress to something um, in my life. It may be, um, you know, cooking. Oh, cooking is really stressing me out right now. So what can I do to relieve that stress? Can I quit cooking? Well, mm -hmm. I could. <laughs> Hire but... a chef. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Hire a chef. Yeah, go out to eat, whatever that may be. And then I have to ask myself, or this is what I choose to do. I ask myself, is that possible? Mm -hmm. mm, it's possible, but not the best answer. So then I look for other ways. And, and maybe it's just for the next two weeks, we eat off of paper plates because mm. that relieves something in my stressful day to where 
or my stressful weeks for the moment to where I find more joy, more pleasure, more of the things that I want to do. So I, I really like to set intentions and do release ceremonies as well as meditation and journaling. Those are probably my top things that I like to use. Of course, I do lots of energy type of work. And, and since I am an empath and sensitive to energies around me, I use um, energy bubbles or like when I go to the store to kind of protect my energy and not allow other energies in if I'm, I'm feeling overwhelmed or stressed. So little, little exercises like that have always helped me. Wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing all of the tools. And I love especially what you talked about, the process of meditation and journaling, it's like an inquiry really into really, you know, and that's the thing, sometimes it can be elusive, like what's really going on? Like what's really at the heart of what's bothering me? And those are such powerful tools to really not only find the answer, but to process and release, which is incredible. Thank you so much for, for sharing what you use because it's, I think we all need these reminders as well mm. for what, what, what works, what really, really works. I have one last question for you and I would love for you to share because we're all of course here, these fierce queens, the 11 of you that I'm interviewing are all authors of Jaguar Medicine. And I would love for you to share just in closing what your chapter is about and, and what you're, you're bringing to the world through this process as well. Oh, yes. Jaguar medicine has been such an activating process for me. Uh, just the subtitle, Fierce Feminine Frequency Keepers Birthing the New Earth. I mean, goodness, wow. my heart just <laughs> explodes open when I see the, the cover of the book and hear the title. So this book was very activating for me. And the name of my chapter is um, Integrating DNA Codes, Embodying Your Most Courageous Self. Mm -hmm. And what came through for me is, um, of course, the image of the jaguar. There's so much to the jaguar and her essence and, and, and a fierce courageousness, really. I mean, she is the queen of the jungle. <laughs> so <laughs> feeling into that and, and what came through for me is integrity really mm -hmm. finding those pieces of ourselves and bringing ourselves back to wholeness, back to unity and allowing ourselves to be our fearless, radiant, most courageous self. I think I said courageous twice in there. So you got to be double courageous for this <laughs> one. <laughs> so true. <laughs> Yeah, and my chapter is a bit meditative. I have spent time in Belize where the jaguar is is very mm. honored. So feeling into that culture was beautiful and seeing how connected they are to the land. My chapter does bring in a lot of um, an earthiness and a meditative um, connection to the DNA codes that I call the wisdom within and allowing that to come through within us. Wow. Wow. Oh. Was it, I, I cannot wait to read about that and learn more. Um, I think courage, you know, we've, we've talked about that's been a, a, a big theme throughout our conversation. And it's something that, you know, I just, we really, the more that we can be reminded of that within these beautiful stories, within connecting to fierce women that are walking the talk, you know, really just standing here so bravely in this world that we're living in. And so I'm so grateful. It's such a gift to listen to you speak and to learn from you. Thank you so much for this conversation, Amber. It's been really lovely. Thank you for allowing me to be a part of this, the Fierce Queens, just the name and all of your imagery. It's a, a beautiful space that you've created and the Comeback Queen. I love what you're doing and how you're, you're helping women share their story and find that, that courage to overcome. Oh, thank you so much. It's just been, it's been so much more multidimensional having all of you here as well, you know, to just really expand this because it's, we're all comeback queens, right? Like it's just yeah. really, and to just share that. So I thank you so much. And, and thank you to those who are watching. If anyone has any questions for Amber, if you'd like to share how they can connect with you in the comments afterwards, that would be lovely. And of course, you'll be able to read about Amber's chapter in Jaguar Medicine coming out soon. 
Ah, oh, what a beautiful time together. Thank you so much. And I look forward to connecting with you again very, very soon, Amber. Yes, you also. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye, everyone. <laughs>